irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on LA Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to the Question Reality radio show. I'm Priscilla Leona, and I'm producer and host of this show, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. And for 13 years, we have been providing our audience with entertainment industry career advice. Now, this show is for you if you are questioning your career reality about pursuing a career in show business, or if you're already working in the entertainment industry and you just need some tips, advice, or resource information on just how to elevate your current career status. Now, the guests on our show include Emmy Award winners, we have Grammy Award winners, we have Tony Award winners, we have reality TV stars, and just a wide variety of working show business professionals, which include film, television, music, and radio producers and directors. We have casting directors, literary agents, casting agents, PR agents, talent managers, screenwriters, publicists, actors, comedians, novelists. Ah, the list goes on and on and on. And we even throw in an entertainment attorney in December just because if you hope to make it to the big leagues, you need an entertainment lawyer on, what is that called? Retainer on retainer. So hopefully. Now, if you missed any of our shows, here are the three ways that you can listen to any of them. Number one, free mobile app. As you know, there's only two so far, the App Store and the Google Play Store. So our app, the LA Talk Radio app, is available for free on uh, either of these venues. Now, let's see. Oh, also iHeartRadio. We are on iHeartRadio. We're on iTunes. We're on Amazon Podcasts, Google, Audible.com, Stitcher.com. And the last way is to go to the archive page. So that would be the archive page of the latalkradio.com website. So <clears throat> the website that you're listening directly uh, from now is where you can listen to all of the shows. We've been on since 2008, and we got a lot of shows. So just go to uh, latalkradio.com, look for the show title, Question Reality, or you can look under my name, Priscilla Leona, and there you are. And what's great is that um, the way I set up the shows is that I give the name of the guest, and then immediately next to it, what they do, uh, and then... Uh, the website. So I used to, in the beginning, put their brief bio, but it just ended up being like taking forever. So just go there. It'll have the title. So for example, if you want to be a script supervisor, just search for script supervisor. And it's the, the search is really good. And in, in up, I'd be another show that they're talking about that subject. So just always good to know. Finally, I want to ask you to do me a favor. We kindly ask that you please subscribe to our podcast, uh, the Apple podcast, as well as our social media sites. These days, as you know, the way that you move on up to the east side is to that deluxe what apartment in the sky? Oh my God, that was one of my favorite shows, The Jeffersons. I cannot remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to sing it in my head. But anyway, you have to build your followers. That's what we're all about today, building followers. So you do that, obviously, by giving us a little thumb and a comment if you want. But please go to um, my social media pages. Now, it would be under my name, Priscilla Leona quick tip. I say this every week, but you never know who's new tuning in. Very important to keep 
your branding consistent. For me, it's Priscilla Leona. I could have done it under question reality, but who knows? I may wake up one day and say, oh, I've decided I'm going to change a, my career and completely rebrand it. So if it's under my name, it'll be very easy for people to just Google my name. And that's the little tip for you. Please don't try to get cute and, and change your branding. Don't have uh, Twinkle Toes Tina does taxes uh, and, well actually <laughs> i don't know where that came from that was some freudian slip but you don't want to do anything cute like that because then people can't go to google and type your name and the two associates so branding 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 is important keep all your social media sites the same and your website um <clears throat> now finally if you want to be booked on our show or refer someone to be a guest to promote themselves showcase their projects or their products and just help listeners by providing career advice you have to go okay so now you're gonna have to tune your little ears in because this is where we switch it up to you have to go to our official website which is questionrealityradioshow.com questionrealityradioshow.com, not the website that you're listening to us on now, which is obviously latalkradio.com. That is where we air our show on the radio station, LA Talk Radio, but the name of my show, Question Reality, so the website, questionrealityradioshow.com. And we make it really, really easy for you um, all you need to do is click the contact link, name, email, title, website. That's it. And you are on the list, moving on down the line to get booked. We're always booked uh, six months to a year in advance. So please be patient. Uh, we will get back to everyone eventually. All right. Now, without further ado, it's an exciting show up in here today. I'm going to say every week is exciting for me, but it is very exciting for me. Extra, extra, especially because I could not wait for the two girls to come on today. We have uh, Stevie Wellens and Cheryl Renovato, and they are from a group called Soulful Fem. Soulful Femme, and uh, that is a blues rock soul band, and we are going to be talking to them in just moments, and we're also going to play the song from their latest album, which is, uh, <laughs> it's called It Is Well With My Soul. It is absolutely well with my soul because it's fantastic. This is a song. I tell you, I was telling the girls earlier that when I heard it for the first time, I started crying. It is a really just a fantastic song, very moving. And the vocalist, her phrasing, ooh, if you know me by now, you know that it's all about Mm, phrasing and tempo and clarity some people sing no i love i loved kurt cobain you know i love love me some kurt but i didn't understand a damn word he was saying i don't know what the hell he's saying i just thought he looked sexy and he did the arrangements whoever did that they did a great job with the musical arrangements uh but i didn't understand a word he said so um for me it, it was very important but the phrasing is just beautiful on this song. So we're going to hear that around 525, 530. And I just have to do a really quick little plug. Do you know what's happening on Saturday, August 28th at 2.30 p.m. at the Man's Chinese Theater? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's one of my films. As you know, I am a film producer, and we are having another one of our films screened at the Man's Chinese Theater. It's called Civil Disobedience, and you can get the tickets now. Uh, we are in the film festival stage, so we are going to be screening. This is the West Coast premiere. As you know, I don't know how it happens, but every film that I'm producer on, it just gets moved on up. And it, this one is no exception. Um, one of our films is screening right now at Cannes. Um, that's another one. But this one is just 
just fantastic. It, again, it's called Civil Disobedience, and uh, you can go to danceswithfilms.com danceswithfilms.com if you want to buy tickets to see our little show. It is just wonderful. It and it has some really great actors. It basically it's uh, they're human stories of social relevance and they're just designed to spark conversation about tolerance and understanding between lots of different social issues today. And uh, it's just it, it you can see the screener, uh, or the trailer, rather, if you go to our Facebook page, again, uh, Civil Disobedience Series, and you can see a trailer. So there you go. Just a little tiny plug. Nothing too big, but I'd love to see you there. Uh, you can meet the cast and crew. Obviously, we're going to be there, and we'll be doing a QA and a and and uh, would love to meet you. So please consider coming. All right. Now. Da, 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 da. We're back to the girls that I call them the little dynamic duo. Um, their song, it has gotten rave reviews. It's called, again, It Is Well With My Soul. It hit number two on the soul and blues charts. And these two girls, they just compliment each other like peanut butter and jelly. They just compliment each other with the gift that they just get up there and you're going to get a dynamic experience. I watched them performing on some YouTube videos and I thought, God, I wish I was there. Ah! So when you watch them, you just sit back and be entertained because that is what you're going to get. Um, the Soulful Femme is just real quick and then we're going to meet the girls. They're a multiple award winning musical duo and they're made up of again the two ladies, Stevie Wayan, Wellens, I hope that's how pronounce it. She's on vocals and Cheryl Renovato on guitar and they are from the East Coast. Everybody knows I'm from the East Coast. So these are my two East Coast sisters. They're from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and their debut album it is well with my soul was again recently released and it shot to number two on the soul's blue charts and they're still receiving rave reviews by some of the toughest music critics and they have a legion of fans and their fans have gone crazy over this song there are two article quotes that i just wanted to read you um they have a ton but i just thought these two were were probably the best um it says, quote, these two dynamic personalities complement each other with the gift that they combine for a dynamic experience. Sit back and be entertained. Same thing I said. That is by uh, Pittsburgh R&B. And the next quote is a duo of dynamic. See, these dynamite, dynamite. I told you they were a dynamic duo. A duo of dynamite opposed, no, not opposed, wrapped wrapped up in a blanket of soul and blues and that's by someone named james buckley don't know who that is but i'm sure he's he's a he's a I guess he's a great critic because he picked these two girls and said wonderful things about them. Um, and this dynamic duo, they basically, they check all the boxes for talent, charisma, and effort. So I want you to go to their website right now, if you can, if not definitely after the show, it is soulfulfem.com. That's S O U L F U L F. E M M E dot com. They're also on Facebook under the same name. Uh, oh, they're keeping it. Uh, I just gave this tip earlier. Look at that. They are doing it. They are keeping everything consistent. They're on Instagram, uh, Spotify, YouTube. So soulful fem. And there you go. And we are going to, now we're going to be talking the very interesting advice they're going to be giving us today. Um, we're going to be talking about when you're deciding on who to hire as a talent manager or a band manager or a PR rep. We want to know from them what skill set, business education, and social qualities should they have to best represent you as a musical artist? Because picking these people, as you well know, 
It's just like picking a psychiatrist or a psychologist or picking anyone just because they say they're the best in the business doesn't mean you have a chemistry. You really got to do your research before hiring people or else you're going to be paying money and nothing's going to be going your way. And the second thing we're going to uh, ask is, oh my gosh, how many bands have we heard of that get together, break up, get together, break up. There's some hippie swinger love happening. There's some jealousy happening. It's just the reality of the biz. So I want to know from them with a variety of different artistic personalities, how can you lock in a professional business structure? How do you do it? How does it work? We all want to know. So there you go. And again, you better keep your old ears tuned because <laughs> it is well with my soul is going to play right here. So without further ado, let's welcome the girls. Woo! Soulful Femme! Hey! Hi, Priscilla. <laughs> wow! I love you all. Hello. I, I love you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, I tell you, I don't the difference and in, in your voices so just to start out with can you say hey this is this person and this so we get to just like the first two or one or two times just so we know who's who because you both seem to have uh the same personality which is great and probably why you two get along so well right right hey that's priscilla exactly. this is that's right priscilla this is stevie stevie Stevie. That's a so sexy therefore, name. Yes. Stevie. Hey, Stevie. Uh, when when uh, I was talking to you earlier about this, I'm going to give this question to you. Uh, I told mm -hmm. you that when I heard that song, since you're the vocalist, that's why. Uh, I When I first heard your song, It Is Well With My Soul, it had me in tears. I Again, I have no idea why. And I had asked you, do people tell you guys that about the song? So I want to know if that's happened to another person. <laughs> and if not, uh, what what one unique thing that you can remember, and that will be for both of you, what one unique thing has someone said that they said they felt about that song? Oh, well, um, I think they were usually would ask a lot of people didn't really know the hymn and they wondered what it was about because they were wondering why they were, why they were feeling that way and maybe because the 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 meaning of the song and maybe because way dang it i don't know the the meaning of the song i believe maybe is why it, it seems sad but it's more of a faith type thing i guess maybe they just got the message you know on how life can be so unpredictable and challenging, but you know, faith and, and trust and, and 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 things like that can overcome anything. And I think that's what it, as well as my soul means. I mean, well, that's, see, that's, why. that's what I felt. Just what you said. I, that's exactly what I thought it meant. So, well, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna give myself a little brownie point for that because I said, oh, I wonder <laughs> if it means that. Oh. Uh, and Cheryl, do you feel that that that's what? people are thinking as well is that what feedback you're getting too well we get a lot of feedback just from the fact that we chose this hymn mm -hmm. um as the and it is bookend so the the cd is bookend by this track and we we saw this title when we were traveling in georgia and because I thought you wanted to know the backstory of this. So we looked into the hymn. The hymn was actually late 1800s. And uh, there's a tragic story to it. But when we read about the hymn and the meaning of the hymn and why it was written, um, we fell in love with it. And it was then that we decided this is what we're going to bookend our CD with. And so yeah. in, in terms of a story... We just performed the Pittsburgh Blues and Roots Festival a couple of weeks ago, and we opened the show by having Stevie sing the hymn standing behind stage. So we were both behind stage, and only the band was on stage, and Stevie sang the hymn. After our performance, I think at least two or three people came up to me and said, that not only put chills 
up and down my spine when she sang that hymn, but it made me cry. Mm, I think that? that's the power of how mm. she vocalizes that hymn. Yeah. Wow. That, that's I'm, now that I know that I'm going to go on Google and look for other artists because I know that Steve is the only one that's bringing the waterworks to that song. But I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> Because I want to see who else has sung that song. Oh, so so wait, Matt. So I thought yesterday you guys performed at the Heritage Music Blues Festival. I was it? Yes, a, yes we did. We did yes, that yeah. too. That was yesterday. Yes, you were right. Ah, <laughs> yes, I thought I read that on your Facebook page. So um, you were you performed with a guy named Charlie. I hope it's Brath who joined you. Yeah. For a handful of the select tunes. First of all, we want to ta- we don't want to mention his name without talking about who he is. Who is Charlie Brath? And how did the gig go? Oh, Stevie well, and, the, and then Shirley. Okay, okay uh, the gig went wonderful. Wonderfully, uh, Charlie Brath is a. I, I, he's a, 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 I think he's didn't he win the blues uh, IBCs before Cheryl? He was out in Memphis. Yeah, he's from Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. He's from the area from uh, our area and he plays he's an excellent harp player and i believe he's a uh, endorsed player is he not he's endorsed by honer yes yeah. by honer mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. and he he's wonderful and i i love love his voice and the way he sings and he's just a professional all the way around in fact he was there twice he was there with us and then he was with another uh artist later on that day oh so he, oh yes he, you gotta, he, you gotta, he's something you gotta, else you gotta try to get him to be on my show if you we could do that hook me up girl hook me up I we, we can, oh my gosh so oh my god i was reading on your facebook page that you got I when I read this, I said I I've never heard of it. I have to know what this is that they're doing. Okay, so you have an upcoming gig on August the twenty second at Are you ready for this audience? <laughs> the Picklesburg Food Festival. <laughs> So, so they, there you go. And Heinz is from this area, the, from Pennsylvania. So they're hosting the festival. Are exactly. they? Right. And what's really, what's really exciting and really unique, like Pittsburgh, is it's right on the bridge, right next to the Andy Warhol Museum. And so mm-hmm. they block off an bridge, and that's where they have the uh, entertainment. And that's wow. where we, we will be performing. So it's really, everybody in Pittsburgh will be there. It's oh, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to go to the Pickles Bird Film Festival. Oh, gosh, I'm going to have to put it on my to-do list. <laughs> and we get little pickles. Now. And we get uh, little pickles, little buttons, little pickle pins to put on. You know, we, we yep. get those. Remember those, Cheryl? Or maybe oh, not. Yeah, as a kid, we had the little Heinz pickle, and it had a little pin on there, you know. Well, I hope, cool. I hope for you performing, you get a, a, a year or at least one jar of damn pickles. I hope <laughs> something. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. Get a damn jar, some plastic. Oh, that's not. That's that. Oh, that's well, a totally different company. Oh, scratch. Oh, well. <laughs> so, so it seems like girls that the gigs are really coming back with a full force. So, I wanted to know yeah. from you, what are because you're out on the front lines. What are they doing differently now at these festivals? Like, are they asking to see a vaccination ID or doing COVID temperature testing? Because I can't imagine that that would like slow so much down. But how do they do that for all the people and make sure that the shows start on time? What's happening out there? Cheryl? Oh, Cheryl. <laughs> well, Cheryl, and then. And, well, okay, and, okay, I'll feel that. I'll field that one. Yeah, field um, that one, Cheryl. Quite honestly, now, some of the festivals that we play, um, they will have uh, seating six feet apart. 
okay, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're in the same group. Other festivals we play, like yes, they don't have that, um, you know, stipulation. Um, we haven't been asked to, to prove vaccination uh, at any of the festivals, but I know a lot of the clubs that we play uh, and perform at, they will still have COVID restrictions. Um, mm -hmm. Will there limit the number of seating unless it's outside? But most of these blues festivals are outside. So it's, it's a little bit different. Even though there's a lot more people, it's a little bit different because they are outside. Got it. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that same thing happening here. So nothing different. I guess it's just going right. to continue. Yeah. Until it, until it doesn't continue. I have a feeling masks right. are going to be in our future for mm -hmm. at least 10 years. I don't know. But it's kind of good because, you know, you don't have to put your lipstick on. I don't, you know, <laughs> You know, you don't have to put your makeup on if you don't want, but I would no. go out of the house without any damn makeup, but that's just me. But I have a feeling that, and you know, I actually kind of like it. I do because it makes me feel safer, but who knows? It's so do I. I. It, makes you know, it, it makes you feel safer. Um, now, you girls must have a ton of funny stories of things that have happened during your musical oh, career. Boy. I imagine <laughs> you are definitely going to have one at the Picklesburg Festival. <laughs> so can each of you remember one, just one funny story uh, and tell us what you learned as a result? Oh, boy. All right, You're just tell us go. about You go first, Cheryl. <laughs> you go first, Cheryl. I want to hear this. Go ahead. Okay. I want to hear it. I, I don't, I'm trying to come, that's a hard one, Priscilla, because I can't think of something that's putting us on the spot right there. You know? Not me. Um, I got a million of them, but my right. problem is like, oh, I got to figure out which one you. it is. Stevie, we're going to you. Give oh, us a story, girl. Give us a story. Go for it. Oh, let's see. Um, well, okay, I'm trying to think of this too, but there's one that, there's one that is not so much funny, but more of inspirational. And this, okay, I'll do that one first. This one is when I, I, I remember performing uh, in a club. Uh, this was some time ago and uh, not too long ago, maybe several years ago. And I was with a, doing a jazz band, but we were doing something like some really nice, quiet stuff, really some good music. And there was this man sitting at the bar the whole night. He was there by himself and he was looking and listening to the music. So... At the end of the night, he comes over to me and going, oh, God, don't tell me this man's the one to try to hit on me. <laughs> but no, but it wasn't that at all. It was not that at all. He came over to me and he says, I enjoyed listening to the music. I enjoyed listening to you singing. In fact, it's a couple songs. There was a song in there that you sang that made me feel so good that I'm going to go home and make love to my wife. Oh. I went, I like I was almost getting ready to cry. That was the best compliment I've ever had in my entire singing career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made him made the he felt so he was gonna go. I guess maybe they were in a fight or something, but he was there by himself. He said, I'm gonna go home and make love to my wife. So I was saying, Well, you know, my job here is done. That is true. <laughs> if you can send a man home with it pointing to the ceiling, you've done your you job. You know it. You exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Now, this, no. now I'm gonna give you the funny one. The funny one was a, a wait a minute, was the had a um, wardrobe malfunction. Wow. It was a, it was, yeah. I had these pantyhose that were like a little too small, a long while back, and they were coming down, be, coming down my leg. <laughs> and I was in a skirt, short skirt, short skirt, and I felt them coming down. And maybe they were a little too big. They were coming down, so I said, uh. Oh, Oh, uh, and I so they're getting ready to go down. I mean, really coming down. So I went behind the to the drummer. Went behind the drummer. I, I can't remember the song was. They were doing something. Let me take a solo. I went behind the drummer, and I said, <laughs> I told the drummer, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Try not to look. I don't want, <laughs> but I got to do this. I lifted my skirt up and yoked them bad boys up and threw my skirt right back down. So he, yeah. <laughs> What was I gonna do? I said, you know, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry. I have to do this. I'm so oh, sorry. Believe me. He, he was like, don't be sorry, girl. You just set me up for the night. That's another one yeah. going home, making love to his wife now. I, well, I hope so. I may have scared him half to death. <laughs> You've done it again. 
Hey, everybody, it is time to hear this song. Okay, so you hear her voice. She's obviously, you can hear in her voice that Stevie is just a gregarious, lovely, fun, happy person. Uh, but let me tell you, let me put the switch on because girlfriend's going to get serious in this song now. We are going to play the song. As I said, it is Well With My Soul. They just told you a little bit about the backstory, which I find fascinating that it's a him. Um, but when you hear it, I want, it's going to make you think of lots of lots of things. And the last thing you're going to be thinking is of it as a him because she has a way of vocally modernizing it. And the, again, the phrasing is great. The song speaks for itself. But um, the instrumentation, which I want to talk about, these were fabulous musicians. I don't know. Oh, that was Cheryl on that guitar. Cheryl was rocking and rolling, even though it was a him. She was rocking it out, right? That was a great guitar solo. Um, but uh, let's listen to the song. And when we come back, we'll talk more about, oh, you know what? Maybe you, you could just real quick tell who the people playing on the song or what instrument, uh, Cheryl. Well, on his, on the hymn, it is well with my soul. The only instrument is a Hammond B3 organ that we had recorded. So if, if you're speaking of the hymn, oh. then it is a organ. Oh. Yeah. And it's only and it's and it's only part of this. It's only like a part of it at the beginning because like the intro and then there's the outro. We have background vocals on that, background vocalists, so it's not, you know, like a choir, choir behind us, and the organ, and uh, that was done by Mr. Uh, Chuck Anderson. Mm. He played, oh, he did, and he played other instruments on the CD as well. So, I tell you, the way you, the, the way you're singing, it sounded like you had a whole 12-piece band. It was just, it was behind <laughs> in your mind going you were hearing all the instruments but it's just your voice that's able to create that magic miss miss darling so let oh. is with uh, you wait till you hear it people stevie is rocking this song out so without further ado let's hear it is well with my soul Attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. to go to soulfulfem.com and you can get a hard copy. You can order a hard copy from us or you can just go on to Spotify or any of the other uh, digital uh, 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 places to go and find the music and get us anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you're on iTunes too, right? Um, are we yeah. on iTunes? Yes, we are. Yeah. Yes, we are. I know you're on iTunes because I already paid my little dollar twenty nine or was I can't, and it's not much to hear Thank Stevie you. sing. I mean, come on, you heard a sample of what's happening. Now, that's not the only fantastic song. You have, I think it's 12 songs on that album, right? 12 or 13, 12 or 13. 12 or 13, 12. right? Now, yeah. did you have a theme for, I mean, you know, most people when they're creating an album, they, they think about a theme and they tie all the songs together. Was there a theme? And, you know, uh, Cheryl had said that you, you bookend. Uh, the right. album. So, what was the theme? 
Um, well, I think this the theme with, well it is well with my soul and everything in between because there's the begin there's the, the you heard the intro of the the album it is well with my soul and then there's the outro you have to hear that that if you haven't heard that yet that's gonna knock your socks off but the in between I guess is more of our experiences uh, not just blues but there's jazz and funk but our experiences in our music. Uh, our music lives, I guess you'd say. Wouldn't you say, Cheryl? Something like that? I mean, well, I think, I think too, um, rather than a theme, I think, like Stevie said, it is the human experience. And I think um, because the hymn was written about a personal family tragedy, I, the, the, the music was written, uh, uh, most of the music was written through personal pain and experience. Um, yeah. and, and that it is well with my soul. And then that's what it is well with my soul is really about. It's, it's through your pain uh, that you go through in life. Um, it, it, and not necessarily you have, pain. You have faith. Yeah. And you yeah. Have yeah. Faith. yeah. Faith is what gets you through. And, and, and that's kind of what we felt about this CD and then the writing of it. Mm-hmm. Now, you obviously putting an al- album together, especially with that many songs, my gosh, mm-hmm. I would imagine that takes some serious organization. So um, I, I, I wanted to ask you either, I don't know who would be best to ask this, but uh, when you're deciding on who to hire as, say, a uh, recording producer or a talent manager or a band manager or a PR rep, whoever you are interested in putting on your team, uh, what skill set, uh, business education, and social qualities, qualities should a person think about to represent you best as a musical artist? Maybe mm-hmm. just, you know, one or two, because everybody's different. But what are the consistent things you should think about, Cheryl? Cheryl. That's, okay, that's a really good question, and thank you mm-hmm. for asking that. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people, you know, yeah. in, in musicians, you know, people in our business don't think about that. Um, first of all, in terms of who we hire to perform. Stevie and I were very selective in terms of uh, where we went to have the recording. Uh, we're, we were blessed to have That's a um, grant award winning uh, producer. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But in terms of the musicians, we handpicked uh, individually for each song uh, what musicians because we needed certain styles and certain we had certain uh feelings for each song my example would be 40 under it's a painful but powerful ballad um we need like a rock ballad yeah yeah. so we needed someone that could play slide that's incredibly strong um and that's why we asked joanna connor from chicago great chicago blues woman uh to perform that in terms of the business end of it, um, we just signed a management contract. And, you know, we had talked about it and went through a lot of people. And for us, we the reason we settled on Shocker Off Management, if I can give a shout out to Samantha, is because she understood us as creative musicians. She understood the music. And 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 the creative process that we went through, and she asked us to send her a CD so she can listen to it before she even considered uh, representing us. And I think that's imp- that to us it's so very very important um, to have someone that understands you as a creative musician um, yeah. and understands the process, uh, what you care about. Um, how you write, what you, what your career goals are, what you want to, you know, what it is that you want to accomplish, and you have to you have to, you know, create that relationship with that person. And we, I, we truly believe we met that person. Mm. Yeah, it is. I agree. Really- 
It's tricky, Cheryl. I'm telling you, because we all heard the stories about the rifts and the cat fights and the swinger type activities that happen within bands to break them up. And you know, mm -hmm. we're just a, we're just emotional little humans uh, navigating the planet. It's just gonna happen. So exactly. Let me ask you, Stevie or Cheryl, whatever one answers so with a variety of different artistic personalities how can you try because you can only try I, I i think the only band that's still together is like the rolling stones and i think they're like 30 or 40 years into it but i don't know how they do it because they went through all the cat fights and the riffs and the swinger activities how can you try to lock in a professional business structure. I mean, what's the secret Woo. of keeping a band together? I mean, there is no secret, right? I don't know how yeah. you're going to answer, answer that. Uh, yeah, that's it's still a secret. <laughs> well, what can you try to do? You know, do I? I don't know. I I would approach. I mean, obviously, I'm not a singer or have a band, but I would try to instill what being a business professional, I would try to approach it from a professional business perspective, mm -hmm. but well, I don't know if that would work because, you it, know, yeah. there, you work long hours and there's so much emotion and everybody wants to be top banana. And I mean, what do you do? Well, I, I think for, for myself, I, I think for, I'm, I'm going to try to, I think when you find, um, I, you get, sometimes it takes a, a while. It takes a while, you know, to find the right, I guess, harmony in a way, um, because or find somebody that is will believes in your vision, you know, because a lot of people they start a business and they have a vision. This is and they write this. This is my plan, my business plan. This is my vision. This is what I'm looking. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to create. And and the thing is getting the people on board who want to help you along with that, and knowing when they come along with you. That's going to do well for them. And, you know, and after a while, I mean, everybody has their, their, then you get people that might, okay, I like this idea. And then they get a little bit too big for the bridges and they want to, you know, either take your idea for themselves or they just want to, you know, uh, uh, mess you up. I'm not sure some, in some way, or yeah. just, uh, or, or maybe put a little bit too much in there and telling you that, you should be doing this when you should be doing that. And sometimes you have to listen to yourself, listen to your gut. And I think with Cheryl and I, um, I guess we have to rely on each other. Okay. For sure. Yeah. And uh, we had to rely on each other. It's not that, you know, I, I, I love my, uh, there's a lot of musicians that I adore, absolutely adore them. And a lot of them doing their own thing. But I think for Cheryl and I, we have our vision, and it was difficult to get others to, I guess, understand where we're coming from. Maybe because we, I'm going to say this, I hate to say, maybe because she and I are both women. And the other folks are men, and they didn't quite, you know, some of them didn't think maybe we knew what we were talking about or knew what yeah. we were doing. Yeah. Okay. And then you have, we have that. We have that to, do, to deal with. And so, I think Cheryl and I, um, you know, don't get me wrong. Cheryl and I, we disagree on things a lot, but yeah. we agree on a lot as well. Yeah. And I think we have that, we have that other, um, we have a lot of things in common just personally, mm -hmm. you know, in our, right. within our lives. And, and I think, I think it's another thing, maybe you could see that or feel that in the CD because when she writes something and we listen to the music, I, I, I know immediately where she's coming from and I know that I can put myself in you know walk in those shoes or she can walk in my shoes and mm -hmm. or somebody else's shoes and I can put that out from my heart and my soul you know in the music what she plays what she writes and how I can interpret it yeah uh, you I, guys because you, it does take time. I mean, when you get to first get together, I mean, you could get together because you're like, oh my God, we have so much in common. We got to put this band together. Blah, blah, blah. And then uh, some things happen and then you just go your own ways. Or it could be, yeah. well, let's try it out. And then you grow with it. Um, I was just watching this documentary on, 
I, ironically, I ju I watch everything on this channel called Reels. It's usually about the history and backstories of bands. And I was watching this um, biography, well, actually, I think it was a documentary, on Kiss. And I'm like, hmm, I never listened to Kiss growing up. I was like a Madonna, girls just want to have fun kind of chick. But, you know, I just thought, you know, I want to watch it. These two have been together they have outlasted everybody in the band and they are yeah. so completely different you would think that the gene simmons guy i mean if you looked at him back mm -hmm. in the 70s you'd think he was a mm -hmm. drinker and a smoker and he did drugs that man said that he's never drank smoked or done drugs and when i was watching this documentary they were so professional it was like they were stockbrokers they were so yeah. Right. They were like really professional, and I thought, well, that's why they ended up uh, keeping that them at least themselves well, together. Because and then you get the ones who drank I, themselves and 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 drank a whole lot right? and did a whole lot of drugs, and they're still together too. Yeah, you know? so you don't know what the secret is. Who knows? Real yeah. quick, because I I want to get one more question in because we end at five fifty. A question. Oh, give me one of give me one do or don't. One do, one don't of pursuing a career as an aspiring singer or musician. We'll start with uh, with uh, Cheryl, and then we'll go to Stevie. Well, let's see. Do I'd rather go positive than negative? Yeah. I think yeah. I, I think uh, the positive would be definitely find a mentor that you trust, someone in the business that has experience in the business. Uh, that understands your goal, your aspirations, and and doesn't matter at what stage you're in either. I have a mentor right now, uh, but mm -hmm. being that mentor, that guiding light that will not steer you wrong, because this make make no mistake, as you know, it's a business, mm -hmm. and there's pitfalls, and a lot of these younger musicians don't understand that. Um, so definitely, it would be to find a mentor. And the other do would be to be or, yeah, to be or not professional. To be. <laughs> yes. Yeah, be always be, conduct yourself as a professional. It is a business. Right. right. Okay. Right. And my so do. The, I, I, so the do nots would be like, don't show up late. Don't come to a band rehearsal correct. drunk. Don't, exactly. I mean, that's what, yeah. <laughs> Those are the don'ts. Those are definitely <laughs> the don'ts. My, my do is, and then I'll give you the don't. My do real quick is to know your craft. Um, if you, whether you're playing an instrument or whether you are singing, uh, you, you know, using vocals, know your craft, study as much as you can, learn from others, listen to others and listen and, and take advice. You know, if it's good advice, take it. Listen, to, try something. It doesn't hurt to try something once. Don't, like I said, don't come to a drunk. Ladies, ladies, and my vocalist friends, have your own microphone. Have your own oh, cord, yes. Have your own mic stand. Have, oh. If they have their instruments, have a, what extends your instrument, your your organic instrument. Yeah. Hey, bring your stuff, too. So that's what I'm, that's all. That's now, thing. with the microphones, with COVID, you can't be using so much sharing a mic anymore. That's Right. No, that's right. And that's you know, right. I have mine all the time. A big don't for me, my last thing I'm going to say is the big don't for me is, and Stevie and I are very well aware of this, don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. Thank you. Whether it's yes. because of your age or your gender or your taste in music. They don't laser ever focus. Let mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. we've been yeah. told that a million times. And you girls are still out there rocking it like there's no tomorrow. I mean, what would you be just think about it? What would you be doing if you listened to everyone who said, Well, you know, you you girls are this or that or that? I mean, you'd be what are you gonna be a couch potato to sit and watch mm -hmm. the I, girls? Oh, hell I, no. I don't care yeah. how many lumps and bumps I got, I'm gonna be wearing my tight shit. So you that know, don't get it, get it twisted, that. bitch. No. <laughs> There you go. Right, you go. right. That's the East Coast mentality now coming out, right? So uh, <laughs> we are going to uh, thank you so much for being on the show. If you want to buy these two lovely 
silly little babies uh, song, their whole album. I think the whole album's on iTunes, right? Uh, Stevie and Cheryl? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. you can yes. go and you can listen to all of the songs. Go to iTunes right now. Um, I don't know if you have a Android. I don't even know what it is because I've had an iPhone so long. What are you? Where do you go if you have an Android phone? You can't go to, or can you go to iTunes? You can Spotify. You can go to Spotify. Okay. Spotify. Yeah. Okay. So go listen to these songs and at least Give my darling my one song. Come on, one song. They're going to the damn pickle festival. The That's pickle, right. Picklesburg Food Picklesburg. Festival. Right? They gotta buy all new outfits. They gotta like get their stilettos out. We gotta get our. That's right. That's right. So, all right. So go to their website. Go to their social media site. Soulfulfem.com. Soulfulfem on all the sites and especially go to iTunes and buy a song. Say goodbye to your fans, Sharon Stevie. Bye. Bye. See you, Priscilla. Love you. Uh, You're yeah. great. Yes, maybe I'll Thank see you, you so at the Pickleburg, Picklesburg Festival in a couple I can't years. wait to see your movie. I know. Woo! Thank you, girls. Thank you for joining You're us. Thanks we'll see you so next much. week. Bye. Okay, bye. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona right here on L.A. Talk Radio.